taking a break from the 21st century American church is not the same thing as breaking all fellowship with the body of Christ. Do you think we have evidence that taking a break from attending a church is a sin? I want to ask that because people can really struggle with that of I'm not a part of a church community right now. And it's, it's alarming. You know, they're, they're stressed. They're like, I've got to get back in, but they physically feel like they can't. Cause again, they're, they're dissociating, they're shutting down all kinds of stuff's happening. That's in a mental health area. It can be quite dangerous, honestly. Someone is dissociating for days at a time. It can go into a, a multi multiple personality situation. Lots of stuff can actually happen, yeah. but they're like, but I'm supposed to be in church. So I'm wondering what, um, maybe theologically you could bring into the conversation there. Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to address the psychology side <laughs> that you brought up because I'm just not skilled in that, mm -hmm. but I will, like you, you've asked, I'll, I'll do a little bit of the theology side. Um, so I'm going to ask a person that's saying, you know, is it a sin to take a break? I'm going to ask some framing and defining questions. If, um, I heard that said that it is a sin or if they were asking me. And one of the things I'm actually going to ask is, well, what do you mean by church, a church? Mm -hmm. What if I take a break from the church or a church? Because I have a sneaky suspicion that it, they mean something like a 20th or 21st century American church. Um, yeah. And possibly evangelical um, because we really stress that being at the church every time the doors are open. Uh, and that's not technically the same thing as the church in the New Testament. It's a, it's a development from it, but it's not the same thing. So to sort of make a direct line to passages in the New Testament saying, hey, you always need to be there, um, I don't think is a good thing. So you need to say, what do you mean by the church? Mm -hmm. um, because the church is the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So everybody in there. Uh, and then you have the local body of believers that you are in fellowship with. So to see, you know, that's first, we need some definitions. Then the framing, how are they interpreting that Hebrews 10 passage? Um, because that's typically what this is coming from. And while I'm not a trained theologian, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would, and I would suggest checking this with some commentaries. Um, I will say that as I read through this passage, where this is, this tends to come from the do not forsake the coming together. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll say that the author in that whole section is carefully attending to the inability of the law to free us from sin, which is what Christ's sacrifice did for us. So the reasoning of the author for drawing together of the believers here is out of a gratefulness for the reality of their freedom to be able to encourage each other in love and good works. So if the passage is sort of being used as a litmus test for pie, mm -hmm. I think people have missed the boat here or they've gotten off mm -hmm. on the wrong track. It looks like a reminder of how much we need each other because of the shared forgiveness we have. Uh, and that serves as a great hope for um, us in the world full of evil. So, uh, in short, no, I don't think it's necessarily a sin. But then again, if you say you don't need community, um, mm -hmm. now you're going to go against Paul's letter in um, his the First Corinthians letter in chapter twelve, where he does tell us we need each other um, mm -hmm. and the reasons for that. So, and then again, going back to the who, what is the nature of God being community? Mm -hmm. So I think we need to wrestle with, if you say I don't need the church at all, I'm not just taking a break because of my experiences so that I can get myself to a point um, where I'm experiencing some healing, where maybe I'm not having those visceral reactions. Um, but if, you, if you're saying I never want to be a part of this again and I don't need it, almost as if that's your, now your theology. That's what I think you need to wrestle with because that's, that's not going to be found or supported mm -hmm. in the Bible, but taking a break, um, might be about rest. Um, it might be about listening to God mm -hmm. rather than listening to people who <laughs> might be theologically and emotionally underdeveloped, mm -hmm. um, might be self 
uh, sin laden and self righteous, uh, trying to put others under their spiritual thumb. So it might be taking a break from that because some of that's going on mm-hmm. and um, taking a break from the 21st century American church is not the same thing as breaking all fellowship with the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. So where I would caution is in the theology mm-hmm. uh, and then also in the habits because uh, humans are habit forming. So if you take an extended break and there's nothing that you miss about the church, it's time to sort of revisit that. What's what's going on there? I appreciate you drawing that distinction about what the kind of church building our Sunday rhythm ritual that we have in our culture. That's not that's not all encompassing of being a part of the big C church, as we would call it, you know, the body of Christ being the big C church. So yeah, there is a distinction there. And we see in other countries, people aren't gathering in the same way we are either because they can or because it's not their culture. And so it looks different. So yes, there can be some room for that. And I appreciate you you again, drawing that distinction. And sometimes taking a break is kind of getting our footing of what on earth should I be looking for? How do I, like some of the tips you shared in the beginning of, oh, I should look at the leadership structure. Okay, like, all right, I'm going to take a look at that. Oh, I'm going to check out some things online maybe first. I'm going to want to meet someone for coffee and ask some questions. And so as someone is learning maybe for the first time or relearning ways to decide, is this a real Christian community or maybe is it not? Because not all of them are today not just today, but historically as well. Nothing new under the sun. So just things look a little bit different, but it's kind of the same. So it's okay to step back and and take some time to to do that. I do recommend that if people are like, I just need to, I don't, I don't know about the Christian anything. I don't know. That's a big part of why being emboldened is here, you know, is for people to be able to reach out and connect virtually or in person, depending on the details. And it's an option to just be able to ask questions. And so you're not isolated, but you're not getting, quote unquote, plugged in, you know, either where you're like, oh, I'm making this really big commitment, just a very low commitment. And I really appreciate how people will, they'll follow along with our resources for months, and then they'll reach out. Because they were able to establish, okay, I feel comfortable. I, I feel there's some trust that has been built. And so now I can have a conversation. And Mary Jo, I know that happens to you where you go to conferences and you speak on, you're teaching on what you teach on a lot about your story and all that has come out of it, all you've done with it, all the learning and education that's come. And you're sharing about these things and you've got people coming up to you sharing about what they've suffered, you know, how that's been for them because Mm -hmm. trust has been built. They've been following along. They've been listening. And I think there's room for that for us to say, I'm going to observe for a little while, and then I'm going to engage, and I'm going to start asking questions. And I think if we do it too quickly, again, we could be at risk of landing ourselves from one boiling pot of water into another one. So I completely agree. I would support everything Mary Jo said. Don't don't go isolate yourself. Um, one last just interesting point is physiologically, we have a neuropeptide that's released in our body. And Mary Jo, you might find this interesting. It's released in our body. When we have a trauma response, the negative impact of that neuropeptide is heightened when we isolate. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. How our bodies were created? Yeah. That helps. Like, I need community to get out of my mind. (laughs) Yeah. But when Yeah. But oftentimes we do want to isolate. Some of us don't. Some of us are like, we want to go talk to someone. We tell everyone our story. And because we're trying to make sense of it. And some of us are like, no, I want to shut down and pull back. So I think it speaks to how we were created. We were created. We're avoiding the isolation. You know, leaning in is actually going to have, it's going to help us in the long run. So just determining who's the safe person to do that with. Yeah. Okay, and maybe not the perfect person. Maybe they're not going to say all the right things, but who who can I trust yeah. in that situation? Yeah.